The Wars of the Roses was a bitter family feud, fought between the rival descendants of Edward III. The Lancastrians, descended from John of Gaunt, the Duke of Lancaster, and the Yorkist, descended from Edmund of Langley, Duke of York, and Lionel, Duke of Clarence. Both sides had heirs aplenty, and yet, somehow, neither line won the wars. Instead, Henry Tudor, a minor nobleman, came from obscurity to claim the greatest of prizes, the throne of England. How did this happen? Well, my name is Margaret Beaufort, Henry Tudor is my son, and today I'm going to tell you exactly how he became King of England and founded the Tudor dynasty. A toast to our new King of England, Henry the Seventh. God save the King! God save the King. All of my hard work finally paid off. Y your hard work? I think you'll find it's thanks to me that you've become king. Thanks to you? What are you saying? It is clearly down to me. All three of you are wrong. Without me, you never would have become king. <laughs> you? <laughs> you? Don't be ridiculous. Henry won his throne in battle, in war. That's nothing to do with women. They don't I... even fight. Hello! Who are you? I'm Chance. Fortune. Good luck, whatever you want to call me. I am responsible for all the things outside of your control. Who are you? I am Henry the Seventh. I've just been crowned the new King of England. Here. Yeah. This is my mother, Margaret Beaufort. Oh, um, a pleasure to meet you. Allow me to introduce my husband. Thomas, Lord Stanley. Henry is my stepson. And I am Jasper Tudor. Henry is my nephew. Margaret is my sister-in-law from her first marriage to my brother Edmund, Henry's father. Pleased to meet you all. I heard you arguing, and I think you're all quite wrong about Henry becoming king. It's down to me, chance. Well, we can't all be the most important factor in Henry becoming king. How are we going to decide? It's very simple. Let's look at the events that led to Henry becoming king chronologically, then it should be obvious what the most important events were, and we'll know who was responsible for them. Well, where should we start? Mm. The Battle of Tewkesbury, the 4th of May, 1471. That's when you became a real contender. Before the Battle of Tewkesbury, Henry's claim to the throne was dwarfed by several other Lancastrian claimants. King Henry VI was still alive, as was his son, Edward, Prince of Wales. Henry wasn't even the principal Beaufort claimant, since Edmund, Fourth Duke of Somerset was also still alive. However, all three of these men were killed fighting at Tewkesbury or died shortly after. That left only Henry Tudor and Henry Stafford, the Duke of Buckingham, with claims to the throne. Both claims were weak since they came through women and illegitimate births, but Henry's claim was stronger since he had links to royalty on both sides of his bloodline. The Beaufort claim to the throne came through the son of Edward III, John of Gaunt, and his third wife, Catherine Swineford. The problem was, they were not married when their children were born. Although they got married later, and the Duke made Richard II legitimise the children, the Beauforts were banned from ever inheriting the throne, making any claim via that family line technically illegal. On the Tudor side, although both Edmund and Jasper Tudor were the half-brothers of Henry VI, this was through their mother, Catherine Valois, Princess of France. Although she had been a Queen of England, she had no claim to the English throne. Nevertheless, after the Battle of Tewkesbury and the death 
of all alternative Lancastrian claimants. Those who did not want a Yorkist king had no other options left except those from either Tudor or Beaufort descent. The combination of both bloodlines made Henry's claim stronger than the Duke of Buckingham's, and therefore he became the Lancastrian heir. Okay, I fought at Tewkesbury, so if you're saying Tewkesbury is a decisive moment in Henry's story, then I must be the reason he has become king. Except the Lancastrians lost the battle. And what did you have to do after that? Well, I have a dream. Sorry? What did you have to do after you lost the battle? I ran away to Brittany. <laughs> well, that is true, but he took me with him. I was the last Lancastrian heir, and he kept me safe for 14 years. As our story progresses, it will help to know where each of the key players are. On this map, each is represented by a small figurine. After Tewkesbury, with the Lancastrian royal line wiped out, Jasper and Henry fled to Brittany since both had fought against the new Yorkist king, Edward IV. Henry now represented a potential threat to the Yorkist regime, although at the time, Yorkist sources declared that they had won the War of the Roses. Tewkesbury also left Margaret a widow for the second time. She knew that in order to be successful, she needed a new husband who was influential within the Yorkist court she set her sights on Thomas, Lord Stanley. Currently, he was the steward of King Edward IV's household, but Margaret knew he also had a reputation as a skilful power broker and therefore might make a useful ally in the future. It was a decision which arguably changed the course of British history. Don't you think it's a bit convenient that all the people with better claims to the throne than you have died? That's a point to me. True, but without me... Henry could have ended up as a potential heir in exile. Jasper and Henry may not have been able to come back to the country and could have even been captured by the Yorkists. Well, of course, I help with that. I was able to tell Margaret about the things I overheard in the council meetings I attended. And any time that Richard III or Edward IV made plans for your capture, wasn't Margaret able to warn you? And didn't she save you from capture? She did. True. But it really wasn't until after the death of Edward IV we were able to make any real progress. When Edward IV died on the 9th of April 1483, the throne should have passed to his eldest son, the new king Edward V. But the king's uncle, Richard Duke of Gloucester, declared his brother's children illegitimate and grabbed the throne for himself, becoming Richard III and imprisoning both Edward and his younger brother Richard in the Tower of London. They were never seen again after the 1st of July 1483. Assuming the boys to be dead, Margaret reached out to their mother, Elizabeth Woodville, and proposed uniting against Richard by marrying Henry to her eldest daughter, Elizabeth of York. The Queen agreed, and since Elizabeth was directly descended from Edward III, their engagement strengthened Henry's claim to the throne. The marriage alliance with Elizabeth of York was the key. By aligning yourself with Edward's last surviving heir, those Yorkists who didn't want to follow Richard could now stay loyal to Edward by following you. Sure, but still, it's pretty convenient that Richard became unpopular as soon as you announced your engagement. Convenient? It wasn't convenient. It was planned. True, Richard had made himself unpopular, but nothing would have happened if I hadn't taken full advantage of it. And once there was an alternative, lots of Yorkists who didn't like Richard joined us in Brittany. And lots of rebellions against Richard started in England too. <laughs> yeah, they didn't exactly help, did they? I mean, you got caught organising a rebellion with the Duke of Buckingham and the only reason that you didn't get your head cut off was because I'm on such good terms with King Richard. True, but there was a fortunate outcome of the Buckingham Rebellion, wasn't there? Richard cut off Buckingham's head. He had a claim of the throne to rival yours. Richard's son and heir died in April 1484, and that left you and Richard as the only claimants to the throne. None of that mattered at the time, though. We were still stuck in France. It's a good thing I got Charles VIII to lend me some money for ships and an army. Well, he promised you money, but in the end you only got a small percentage of what you were told. 
because Richard stopped threatening France, so Charles didn't need your support anymore. By the summer of 1485, support for Richard was at an all-time low, and in Brittany, Henry was gathering more nobles to his cause. However, they had no money of their own to use to return to Britain. Although Margaret was under house arrest at Lord Stanley's home in Latham, she was still able to smuggle messages and money abroad, and in July 1485, she told Henry and Jasper to invade. Margaret's money was combined with money from Charles VIII of France and used to fund a mercenary army and boats. They set sail and arrived in Milford Haven on the 7th of August, marching through Wales. The news of Henry's invasion had taken several days to get to Richard in Nottingham, so he had to assemble his forces quickly. He sent messages to his supposed supporters, including Lord Stanley, and all three armies rode to Leicester and eventually met at Bosworth. But even if you funded Henry's army, you have to admit that at the Battle of Bosworth, I was much more significant than you. Henry and Jasper would have been defeated until my army joined in. Except it wasn't your army that joined in now, was it? It was your brothers. My younger brother, Sir William Stanley, actually led the army, but it was still an army of supporters loyal to the Stanley family. And besides, you can't blame me for not joining in the battle. King Richard had captured my eldest son to make sure that I stayed loyal to him. And why was he concerned about your loyalty? Because I married to you. If if, if Henry won the battle, then, then my family would be related to the, to, to the King of England. The King of England would be my stepson. And he was concerned that you had made the family change sides. And he was right, wasn't he? Well, yes. So what we're saying is that the key moment of the battle was the addition of the Stanley family's army to my side. And that was because mother had persuaded them to fight for me? Yes. So really, what we're saying is, is that Margaret was behind the whole time pulling the strings. I don't like it. She didn't even fight in the war. She can't say that she put Henry on the throne. Oh really? So who was it who organized the marriage alliance to, between you and Elizabeth of York to strengthen the claim to the throne and make the Yorkists who didn't support Richard support you. You. And who was it who sent money to pay for mercenaries and soldiers? You. And whose spy network provided you with information about when to invade? Yours. And who risked her life? You did. Right. So, just remember that battles might make for exciting, dramatic stories which take centre stage in history books, but there was much more to Henry becoming king than the Battle of Bosworth. That battle was merely the finale to years of plotting and scheming and taking every opportunity that chance presented me with. Without my 20-year dedication to Henry's cause, he would never have been able to be king of England. They may have fought the battle, but I waged the war.